Thank you for choosing CTN. And now, it's time with Herman and Sharon. I love you. Thank you so much for hey, joining everybody. us. I can do it too. This, this, this is, yeah, you're good. I never, I never do it, but I can you know, do it. there's a certain age that you get to. This goes away too. <laughs> Your one finger won't go. <laughs> That's right. It's yeah, a little harder to do. And, and you pull this off, and they, they just don't go back up anymore. But uh, I have a special friend. You're not going to see him until I'm ready. <laughs> and. Uh, I thought I was your special friend. <laughs> well, you, well, you, yeah, you are. You okay. Are, yeah. It's another special friend? 58 years. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, but a uh, picture is worth a thousand words. So before I tell you his name, watch this.
there is, there in, is person, in person actually what? sitting on the Herman and Sharon set. <laughs> Can you believe this? The guy that was playing before, how many were there? Uh, it was like 350,000 that <laughs> night. I mean, how in the world? <laughs> what does that feel like? It's unbelievable, but the, probably the most incredible feeling is seeing that they were all coming to hear the gospel. Mm -hmm. They all came to hear about Jesus, and that was, of course, through Christ for All Nations with Daniel Kalenda, Reinhard Bonnke's yeah. ministry. Mm -hmm. And, now uh, you say they're going to a crusade that's going to have how many? Uh, in Nigeria coming up in November, they're expecting 2.5 million in one night. They Something say like this that. is where revival's breaking <clears throat> out now. It's in not, Nigeria. It, it, Nigeria and, and uh, Asia, the yeah. Asian countries. Well, if you follow Reinhard Bonnke's ministry a lot, he talks about almost 40 years ago, if not more than that, that he saw a blood-washed Africa and he yeah. saw all of the countries in Africa coming to, to coming to Christ. I mean, you go to Ghana, and most of Ghana is completely saved. And I mean, a lot of those campaigns have been through Christ for All Nations. So mm -hmm. they're just great friends, you know. Daniel's a great guy, and he let me come to one of those events. He said, "Roy, would you come out and record your song in the presence of?" And angels? he sings too. He sings too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it wasn't like you know you're taking my spot. Not at all. No, it's not even like that. It's just yeah. it's, it's it's an opportunity to just work together mm -hmm. in the harvest. So. I, I've got now our audience changes quite often. You know, whenever <laughs> I have Sharon on, somehow we get a new audience. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, we don't normally have the same people watching, uh, even though we do have a group of people that tune in on a regular basis, I think four or five of you. <laughs> but anyway, a uh, long time ago, I used to do a coffee club live. Now, I've said this, pr I've probably told this story 25 times. Uh, at least. I think so. She gets bored. 58 she gets, times. She gets, <laughs> she gets bored about every story I own. But but anyway, <laughs> and I keep telling her, I go, you know, it, you know. I, the, you heard him a thousand times, but the other person I'm talking to hasn't heard it yet. See, see she's, even, she's yeah. even got it down pat, what I say. So. <laughs> Anyway, we, I was doing a coffee club live, and uh, Linda Opsel, my assistant, uh, she said the, the, the guy is going to play the piano or whatever, so I'm thinking, oh, okay, because I had pastors on with their congregation, and it was kind of exciting. We did it for seven years, and so all of a sudden this guy with long hair, it, it looked like, uh, I, I like mixed martial arts that's kind of my thing. It was thing. longer than it is now right now I think. Yeah, yeah I, I just had it cut. And anyway, I, I, yeah, yeah, I just had it cut. So <laughs> so, so I, I thought he looked like, you know, a mixed martial arts, you know, one of the guys. Yeah, kind of built I think way. he said cage fighter. Cage fighter. Well, that's what it is. It's in a cage. <laughs> it's, it's, it's in, a, in yeah. an octagon. And, and so, uh, so he's at, at the piano. So he starts playing because it was, it was a live, you know, and you know, when I do stuff, it's, it's never it's never formal or anything. I do whatever comes to mind. So he's playing the piano, and all of a sudden he starts. You you just heard some of it on that on that DVD. And he's got a sound that is like, what in the world? <laughs> and so I'm going. And now don't get offended at this because I that's the only way oh, I can describe it. Okay. Careful when you say that but, you scare me. But but I discovered immediately <laughs> that he wasn't a church music kind of guy. <laughs> So, yeah, so, see? Okay, but, well, okay, <laughs> but but there's a difference, you know, the church guys, you know, they, it's like, okay, that's church. You better music. stop while you're ahead. And, and so, so he's playing, and I'm going, so I went over to Linda, and I said, who is this guy? And she goes, and then she starts describing what he, he does praise and worship, and he's at, at you know, large gatherings and large churches, and plays the piano and sings, and I said, oh my goodness. That was our first meeting. We connected. And after that, it, yes, I don't know. It's like we didn't we didn't say now we need to connect or call me no, or whatever. It just happened. It just happened, and I I don't know what it is because it's you know, I don't have too many friends that are seventy. <laughs> yeah, eight. Eight, <laughs> because my my uh, my stepfather's seventy eight. Yeah, and would you believe his stepfather? Get this now. Same. February third, nineteen thirty nine, my birthday. Mm. I was talking to his stepfather, which was in the studio one time, and he said, I'm having a birthday. And I go, what do you mean you're having a birthday? He goes, February 3rd, 1939. I go, oh my, God. same year, same day. As we connected, um, 
there is just obviously the Lord had spoke to me years ago about television and stuff and so when I was invited on that show I had been on other shows as well and I've always looking around studios like you probably did all your life well, yeah, yeah. you're always pointing <laughs> yeah, things out yeah. seeing things yeah. and wondering what is it that is involved and everything and I remember our conversation I said Herman you've been in television a long time I said tell me what I need to do he said oh to get in television and I said yeah and I'll never forget what he said Sherry he goes go get you a wheelbarrow fill it full of money dig a hole and dump it in and then go refill it and keep doing it repeatedly <laughs> you, you were the only one that's ever remembered that yeah of course and i thought oh so the answer is no <laughs> amen yeah. moving on yeah how's your calling yeah so so i mean that's kind of how it happened then we just started talking and of course we were in love with the lord you know and so we started connecting yeah. and stuff and texting i mean Oh, he loved, yeah. I, we talk I, all the time. Well, all, I mean, I, I mean, I had such a such a connection that I could almost tell he was moving into another area in ministry, and it, and I needed to pray for you. Yeah, it, it's just. It, and it, I'm so it, glad you did. It was that. It was that. Con and then I had opportunities to open some doors and whatever yep. you know. And and it, it just continued. I don't know how many years ago was that. Oh my five, goodness, five no, years? no, 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 that was almost about, I'm going to say eight. Oh my goodness. Because yeah. coming April this next year yeah. will be the 10 year anniversary wow. of the Lakeland Revival that happened in 2008. Yeah. Now, you, were, had you done that Lakeland Revival by the time we met? Yes. Okay. I had already well, see, been I, through that. I've been around the world yeah. and then. Because I knew something was happening over there. I didn't know that you were playing, you know, to yeah. a massive crowd. But you went into television, right? I went now. Didn't you go into TV? Aren't you? Well, I was on television. I'd never been on before because of the Lakeland Revival. It just, it, it literally launched that us all. That was God television. Oh, right? it was on God TV and it totally launched us all, all around the world. Yeah. You know, I went from virtually being on the road with my wife and kids where we had no home, traveling up and down the East Coast of America, just trying to go to a little church yeah. and, you know, give an altar call yeah. to all of a sudden overnight, literally, the whole world was watching. Even people who didn't like Christianity or whatever were watching. And by, I guess it was four and a half months from April 2008 to August, uh, I had people, uh, 350,000 people had come in from around the world to come to those meetings. And millions were watching by way of television. And we had sold around 4,500 records. No, I'm sorry, 45,000 records in a month and a half without a record label. They were coming in and grabbing it by, they were buying stock, like give me a hundred for my store back in Holland. Give he, me would, he, for he, he would text me, Herman, do you know where <laughs> yeah. I am right now? Yeah. And I would go, no. <laughs> he says, I'm in London. Yeah. And, and the church is packed. I mean, it's, it's just. Um, yeah, revival, man. I'm in love with the Lord. It's did, not. Did, did, you, did you change your, the only thing I can think of is the word format, because that's what we have here. When you went from little groups to these massive no. groups? No. I just led worship. The presence of God would come in. I, You know, I've been asked this so many times. People say, what's the difference between your worship and others and all this kind of stuff? Well, I don't compare myself with anybody. But here's what's about me. If you're saying what's going on with what God's doing with me, I felt like Lakeland was like a bunch of cameras that invaded my private space with the Lord. Wow. That's how I lead worship. I cannot and you've known this for a year, I cannot get behind a piano and fake anything. Yeah, I know. Even if I try, I can't do it. It feels like sin to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If it's not from my heart, if it's not right. flowing out of the issues of my heart, then it's not real. Yeah. And I'm not saying that for television. That's, that's the way it really is that's with right. me. That's true. And what would happen is... You want the camera to follow you, you're not following it. Correct. And, and what happened was the presence of the Lord would literally invade the place where everybody, just about everybody would be engaged in unity in one place, in one accord. Well, last time that happened in the Bible was Acts chapter 2, and the Holy Spirit came in like a rushing wind and filled the whole place. And that, that's what kept on happening in our ministry. Even before Lakeland, from 2005 to 2008, we were having little meetings that would go from 50 people to it would grow to 200, or it would grow, you know, exponentially. It would just grow, and people would come, and there would be an atmosphere. And, you know, sometimes the worship sermon would last for two hours. You know, and people didn't want to leave. Why would you want to leave when the presence of God is really truly there? It's not just a song service. Why would you want to leave? You wouldn't. 
If Jesus walked into this place right now and sat at the table, you would stay here for hours. Oh, yeah. You would. Yeah, true. You know, we were on... I was Good just, example. I was just on a program with Bob DeAndrea. Right, except you're not Jesus. You, I'm you, not you Jesus. That, right? Not even close. Okay. <laughs> Thank God that I'm not Jesus. Um, I need him every day just like everybody else yeah. does. But we, I did a show with Bob DeAndrea just recently. Who's he? Yeah, he's this guy that owns this. It's, just, it's he's really an amazing guy. Yes, he he's he's like <laughs> I've known him, I think since I was a little boy. A long time. Yeah, a long time. But we were sitting there doing a uh, a show, and he had a particular guest on that was talking about heaven and the atmosphere of heaven. Well, we after the show was done and we we broke in the studio here, we sat down with this individual, and and you could feel Jesus walked in the studio right here just a few weeks ago. And we sat there for two and a half hours. Finally, we had to go. I mean, some of your camera people were here. They, we, we, the atmosphere of heaven invaded this whole place. And all of a sudden, we became like little kids. <laughs> and wow. we, couldn't, we, couldn't, we couldn't wait to hear the next thing that was going to come out of her mouth or his mouth or whatever. And that was the atmosphere that I would experience in these meetings. And you wouldn't want to leave. And of course, off of that worship, I can preach the word. Because everybody's heart is open and receptive. You could say anything. You could sing Kumbaya. You could say, let's everybody just give everything. And we would all give everything and just throw it in. It wouldn't matter. It's about Jesus. And so, no, I didn't change any of the format. We kept on going. It just The meetings just got bigger. The money got bigger. The exposure got bigger. Things got open. But you know what I found at the end of that, Herman? And I've talked to you about this. Is that I realized after all these years from being you know, in these small places to all of a sudden, everybody knows your name. And, and Jesus said, woe to you yeah. when everybody speaks well of you. How many well times did I warn you? Oh, but, you did? But, yeah. And I didn't listen in the early years yeah. too much because, you know, when you're a young man, and I was in my early 30s, yeah. uh, you feel so full of God, you feel invincible. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, man, I can do anything. Right. I could touch that. It'll turn to gold. Right. I could pray for that person to be healed just like that. You're like, and somebody comes up and says one thing of opposition, and you're like, you're of the devil. Like, in <laughs> Jesus' name, I rebuke you. That's right. Well, what I found out is, is that you have to be very careful of that. Mm -hmm. Because David was king, and yet he ended up being with Bathsheba and having her husband murdered. Yeah. So he man of God, but he was an adulterer and a murderer. Yeah. And yet God says... I'm after him because he's after my heart. And I'm thinking, so I'm looking at that and, and Jesus, Jesus was trying to get the kingdom into us, yeah. not us to get the kingdom in the earth. He was trying to get the kingdom into this place. Mm -hmm. And that's what I've been going through this last 10 years. And I began to realize all those crowds are great. It's wonderful. There is a rush. There is a great feeling. There's, you feel like you're, 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 you're just right in the will of God. And yet, if you can't come back to a personal place where you get alone with the Father and you just say, are you pleased? That's what matters. Yeah. And you know, that even that night when you watched here, that night I left the stage and we had a big motorcade, presidential motorcade was given to all of us and everything. We flew right down the highway back to the hotel and I was in a hotel room by myself at the end of the night. And I had to get into my bed and I laid there. And now all the sound is quiet. There's no crowd. It's just me and these four walls. And I just said, Father, are you pleased with what I've done today? Wow. Like, are you really pleased? I didn't try to become religious. I'm not trying to give you the image of I'm so nice and oh, he's just so quiet. I'm a man just like anybody else. And I have to bring it back to him and just say, because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, Seriously, at the end of the day, all that we do, television, ministry, and ministers need to hear this. It's great, but Paul said, I consider everything I did in the past as of dung almost. It's like, wait a minute, Paul, you did some good stuff. He says, yeah, I know. But all I want to know is Christ crucified. Amen. I don't want to know anything else. And I'm there. I'm in that place right now. And I thank God for the open doors. We're still traveling. We're still going around the world, still doing music, still doing things. Uh, but this is what really matters. And my message, not my format, but my message has not changed, but it's been tweaked. It has been perfected. It's still being perfected. And I really want to get a hold of some of these young people that are growing up right now. Millennials. Not just millennials, some of the guys that are my age that are even doing well. And they think that that is the reward. They think that is the merit 
for what God's going to do in the future. And it's just not. Yeah. Your gift will get you there. Your character will keep you there. Amen. And that's probably what's the most important thing to me right now. Can we go up to the piano? Totally. Actually, I just wrote a song. Okay. Let's, you want to hear yeah, that? Yeah, I want to hear it. Now, it's so a, it's never been played before? It's never been played before publicly, but it's a Christmas song, so I want to warn you. Oh, great. Oh, I love it. <laughs> we got to have I, it yeah, back for Christmas yeah. it's time. Like, it's I, like my CDs in my car. I heard that you... Um, I heard that you like to listen to Christmas music. Absolutely, all year. All year long. Oh, yeah, there's no... Well, why should it be just for December or November? That's exactly what I've said. It's about Jesus coming to the earth. That's exactly what I've said. I said it's the most right. soothing <laughs> and spiritual-driven music in the world. Okay, so... This is brand new. Brand new. It's called Emmanuel Has Come. I'm releasing it this year. Christmas bells are ringing. Earth and heaven singing. All creation stands in awe. Christ has Is that not the gospel? What, what was the setting that that came to you? Well, I wrote, I wrote this with a friend named Dustin Smith, and he's on a lot of Michael W. Smith records Ooh. and all these guys, and I'm not dropping the name except for he's a really good friend. I've known him before he started doing some of that. And I just had this, I, when I write a song, I just have like this hook. And I kept saying Christmas bells. So I, was, I just kept hearing Christmas bells. Christmas bells are ringing. And I kept thinking about Jesus coming to the earth and the whole story. 
of what Christmas really is, but it's more than Christmas. Yeah. And then he came in with some great words and some a couple other, you know, like a chorus kind of idea. You know, when you were playing that, <coughs> it's like heaven coming down, right? Well, I, I'm while you're singing it. You know what I'm seeing? This huge black choir. Oh yeah. And it starts to build, and the words just create that crescendo. You're literally the third person in four days that said that. Wow. So it has to happen. Yeah. <laughs> really? We're going to have to get a choir. Oh, that, that. Well, when you get to that, listen, our, yeah. our, counts, our a counselor, a prince of peace, he is our great I am. Yeah. Oh, you can hear the whole choir. Oh, King yeah. of kings, the mighty God. And they have those words coming up. Yeah, yeah. Everlasting one. Yeah. Like oh, that, oh, right? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Well, right here, you heard yes. it. <laughs> this is what we're doing. Oh, I'd, I'd love to see that video of it, Bill. Come on. You know, just start Bill, just totally. like a ladder. Yeah, man. Yeah. Share Good. Christ with somebody. I don't know what, what Gary's camera over there. There you go. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, hey, look, I'm a real person, just like you're a real person. You're watching television, and, you know, sometimes it can feel kind of static and sterile, but, you know, we're just a bunch of people who love Jesus. He changed our life. And, uh, you know, I tell this story all the time, but my mom... <laughs> when I was just a thought basically, or actually I was two and a half, so I guess I was more than a thought. <laughs> she was watching Christian television and at that time a preacher came on and said, you need to give your life to Jesus Christ, it'll change your life forever. And she knelt down in her living room, Amen. laid her hands on the television set, which was a zenith by the way. Yes, oh yes. She said she felt the power of God, I'm not so sure. Yeah. <laughs> But she said she really it did was a feel, zenith. it was a zenith, it had tubes, <laughs> that's but, <right. laughs> but she, no, listen, I know that's funny, but listen, here's the serious part of it, okay? And this is, this is what really matters. She put her hands on that television wow. set and the power of God touched her. Her life instantly was changed. It doesn't mean her trial stopped or tribulation stopped. She was changed on the inside, Amen. was Amen. brand new on the inside. And I want to invite you right now. It's so simple. Yes. All you have to do is just yield your heart. It's more than the prayer. It's a turning, a repenting from I'm going this way and I'm turning and going that way. Yeah. And if you just say this with me right now, say, Dear Lord Jesus, come into my life. Change me on the inside. I believe you died and rose again. Yeah. I believe that you have come to give me life and life more abundantly. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Yes. And I believe I'm going to heaven and I'm saved today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. That's all you have to say. Wow. Praise God. That's it. Thank you for that. Bless you. What a blessing to have you. Awesome.